Hello again, this is Matt and this is the fifth video of my C++ Beginner's Guide on YouTube. In this video, we're going to be looking at what happens in your computer when you create and use variables in your C++ code. More specifically, we're going to be looking at how the computer allocates resources for variables that you create in your code. Just before we start, I'd like to ask you guys to please subscribe to my YouTube channel as it is the only way to see if people are actually enjoying these videos and if they want to see more C++ Guide videos. So let's get to it! What I've got here is a simple CMake slash C++ project, which is pretty much identical to the project we had in the last video. If you don't know how we ended up here, please watch my previous videos, as I explained very well in those videos how to create and use variables in your C++ code. The only thing I've changed is the name of the variable that we have inside the program. Previously, this variable was called my value, I believe, but now it's called my age, and it represents an age value, an in a whole number containing my age. And this the program simply outputs that value in a string that says value of my age is and then it appends the value of my age. So if you run this code, you'll be able to see just that, as you can see here. Now going into the main topic of this video, I want to discuss what your computer does under the hood when you create a variable such as my age here in line 7. And to do that, I've created a notepad with a grid representing your RAM, your computer's RAM, where all the values for variables and data that you create inside your computer will be stored. If you didn't know this, your computer RAM can be thought of just a continuous block or continuous array of data where the CPU can access each individual byte. And if you don't know what bytes are, bytes are pretty much just a set of binary digits, which are pretty much different ways to represent numbers in computers using only two digits such as the number three. The number three is written as this, as you know, but in binary, the number three is represented with this set of binary digits or bits. And in hexadecimal, which is what we're actually gonna be using in this video for the most part, which again is just a different way of writing numbers, is represented as this, and that is base 16. If you don't know how to do this conversion between decimals to binary and binary to hexadecimals, you can simply open your calculator on Windows and select the program mode, select the base you want to work with. In our case, we're going to be entering numbers in decimals and then just type the number you want to convert here, such as 79. And you can see that 79 is equal to this in binary and this in hexadecimal 4F. Now, if you're not using Windows, you can simply Google decimal to hexadecimal calculator and I'm pretty sure you're going to find something useful out there. Another important note is that I am pretty much simplifying a lot of things here. So I'm not going to be talking about CPU caches or registers in this tutorial. And we are assuming that all the data that you create inside your program will be stored in the RAM. So now that you understand the setup that I've made here, we can actually begin to look at what happens inside your program when you create a variable. So the first thing that happens here, so when you say int my age, regardless of whether or not you are defining a value to it, whether or not you're putting an initial value to it or not, your program is going to ask the CPU to allocate just enough memory to store one integer variable inside my age here. And what does that actually look like in the RAM? Well, so your program is actually instructing the CPU to request some memory from the RAM that has been currently unused, so your program can use it internally. So it's going to say something like, hey, can I please have four bytes to store an integer value? And your RAM is going to retrieve a position to the starting byte where your integer is going to be storing. So it could be something like, here, for example, I'm highlighting the uh, four cells that will be storing the integer. And the reason why I know it will pretty much ask for four bytes here, so four cells, is because you can actually Google uh, the uh, C++ integer ranges. In this particular page, it actually tells me what the typical size of each type that I've got here is. So for our, in our case, we've got an integer type here. And if you go to this page, it says here that integers are typically four bytes. In fact, for all the architectures that I know out there, for all the computers that I know out there, in C++, integers are always four bytes. I've not seen a different value yet. But theoretically, this would depend on your architecture and your compiler. But in our case, we have four bytes. So what your program is going to do when it reads this is going to ask the RAM for four bytes and the RAM is going to return an address in memory. So the starting point here where you're going to store your value, okay? And one thing I want to note as well is that if you're not defining the value, this memory that you have just requested here is going to be uninitialized. And what that means is that you have no way to tell which value is going to be stored in those bytes that you've requested when you actually get a hold of it. So it could be anything, anything that the previous programs which were running on your computer will have stored on that particular memory that's now unused. So it could be something like AB, 
FF and then this here. So in a way, it's a complete bogus value. You have no control over what value you actually get when you just request it. Now, the interesting thing of this line here is that we're actually requesting for the bytes to store the integer and we're actually defining a value to it. We're actually giving a value to initialize it with. So what your computer is going to do is it will pretty much go back to your RAM and request that memory, but straight away it's also going to assign that memory with the value that you've added in your code here, so 24. And if you look at the calculator, 24 in decimal is simply equals to 18 in hexadecimal. So what this is actually going to store here is simply 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 8. And this is what it's going to be inside your RAM once you write the line of code here line seven. And if you're actually understanding this, you see why I said in the last video to, to always initialize values when you can and not to use them before you actually give it a value. For example, if I had a value called number of cars and I left it uninitialized, now we're to simply print out the value here. The value that you would print out is undefined. And in, in my case, it doesn't actually compile because I've got some flags enabled that will prevent this sort of bug from occurring. But what would this actually do is it would request a different space in the RAM. And again, this is not necessarily right next to the value that we've just got from my from the variable my, val my age here. So it will be a different value, it won't be right next to it. It will be somewhere else that's currently unused. So for example, it will be on say location 42 here, as you can see on the left. So we'll start here and it will request four bytes of memory. And the, and let's say that the value that was previously in there is something like um, FF, 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 and FF. So the value that we have here in number of cars currently when unassigned is this hypothetical value of FF, 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 FF that was there previously before you requested that RAM memory. And obviously if you were to print it out, you would just be a random value that you have no control over. So this is why it's always good to, if you can, always define a value when you're creating a variable. So something like five here. Okay, and I've actually made a misspell it should be number of cars. So now this says that the number of cars that I have is five and you have control over that value because you gave it a value in the first place. And I just want to know that I don't actually have five cars. I have zero cars at the moment and I really wish I had five cars. <laughs> so that's it guys. I'm going to leave this video here and I hope you've understood uh, the idea of allocating space in your RAM to be used for your variables. So whenever you create a variable, you're pretty much requesting some space in the RAM and that variable, whenever you assign a value to it, is going to override the value that you currently have in your space in your RAM. Okay, so this is pretty much the idea. And I just want you guys to think of any computer program out there as a set of instructions that tells your CPU how to create modify and move values around. And that's pretty much what every program does. So understanding this idea is pretty much essential to any programmer. Well, so I'll leave this video here. I hope you guys have understood. I have simplified a lot of things, but if you've got any questions, if you've got any feedback, please comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So that's it. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.